folks, and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Well, what we have going on here today is I am getting ready to add a, well, let's call it a casting deck. I think that's what a lot of people call it. Uh, I'm not necessarily using this boat for fishing. I'm using this boat for testing motors. And you've seen it out on the water a couple times if you followed the last couple of videos I've had. Uh, I wanted this boat, bad part with John boats in general and these little V-bottom v aluminum boats is there's absolutely no storage space in them whatsoever. So if you want to throw some life jackets, some bumper buoys, an anchor, a battery, anything like that's got to be in the floor of your boat right where you're going to be you know, walking or putting your feet down and stuff like that. Well, I want to cure that on this boat. This boat, and what drove me to do this is this boat already had where the seat mounts up front here, it's an aluminum seat, and the angle brackets that mount to it, to the seat itself, already had some cracks in it. Well, this is a 1969 boat, so it's got a few, a few years on it, right? So this way I can, uh, I drilled out the rivets. I didn't show any of that, how I did that, but I will show you how I'm putting it back together. But uh, I, I did drill out the rivets to get the seat pulled out. The seat has flotation foam underneath it, which is great. That's what each of these seats do have. And uh, I'm getting the angle brackets bent. I would normally bend them myself, but there's a blacksmith nearby that uh, calls himself a blacksmith shop nearby that I had him just go ahead. He had the aluminum and he has a brake and all that kind of fun stuff. So I just had him go ahead and break me up a bunch of pieces. So what I did here is I mocked up the shape of the boat because I didn't know you know it's hard to measure something like this hard to get it laid out on a piece of wood and have it come out right uh, so I thought well I'll just take some strips of cardboard I've got right here and cut it cut it up into strips and then it's in pieces about this long and then I kind of shaped each piece a little bit to fit the outside of the boat here and then I took my wife's hot glue gun Shh, she don't know I took it uh, and started gluing these pieces together. I put some tape to kind of hold it and support it, like you see here. And then I took the hot glue and started gluing the pieces together where they overlapped. And then I glued in some braces. So as you can see here, this thing is actually kind of sturdy. But the cool part of me, when I'll be able to take this tape off, go lay this whole assembly down on my uh, piece of plywood, and I'll be able to trace around it and cut it to exact fit, which I think is gonna work out pretty well. I'm pretty excited about that. But what I'm going to do is also put, and, and this, this stuff on the inside here doesn't represent what I'm doing on the inside. We'll do that. We'll look at that as I, as I move this project along. I'm going to cut a hatch in the wood here and support it underneath so I can have a hatch that lifts up. I can reach down and store a whole bunch of stuff in here for safekeeping so I don't have to sit there and take it in and out of the boat as I move, uh, transport the boat back to and from the water. Uh, let me show you another quick little something. Now, the one thing it's hard to see right here is there's a brace right here, a little thin piece of aluminum that goes and follows the floor. It's riveted to the floor, helps give this whole boat some structural support up front. The seat goes from here back to about here. So I'm going to put that seat back in. But as you can see, I'm going to actually cut the board to the inside of this board right here. And that's due to the reason I want this to overhang the seat. So the seat's going to be from about here to here. This is going to overhang the seat. I'm going to go ahead and let's see if I can point at it here and get you right, right over here. And you'll see as we go along, I'm going to put another piece of angle support here and on the side opposite of that to help support the plywood. And I'll put some framing underneath here as well to help make it stiff. So it's going to make it nice when I, when you step in and out of the boat at a boat dock, that you can step up onto here first or versus the seat and step out and you got a nice big platform to stand on. The reason I'm overhanging the seat this far is because it's it's kind of wasted space here anyway. If you're gonna sit on the edge of the seat, you might as well sit here. Uh, I can eventually put a swivel seat up here if I want to. Don't plan to right now. But this battery box right here won't fit underneath the seat when it's up front here, but it will fit underneath this part if I extend the, the plywood past the seat. So this battery box will actually slide underneath here, be all out of the way. But that's the plan, that's the general plan. So I'm pretty excited about getting this done. Uh, this is gonna be the one uh, major project, or I call it a major project I get done this weekend. But it's gonna turn out pretty cool. And right now, just having the cardboard here, 
uh, kind of gives you, gives me an idea what it's going to turn out like. But we'll take the plywood. I got some half inch marine grade plywood that I'm going to use on this, and we're going to cover it in poly resin to to make it you know more waterproof. And then we'll I'll show you as we assemble and put it down. I'm going to we'll be able to pop rivet that aluminum or that not the aluminum the plywood sheeting down to my aluminum braces that I'm going to install around the edges of this boat and that'll hold it down nice and secure and it should last a long time and then once that's done we'll uh, glue some carpet down to the top of the plywood I think it'll look pretty neat when we're done so stay tuned stick with me let's watch this project move along Alrighty, this has been a fun project. Uh, I know I didn't go into a great amount of detail on this casting deck. Uh, you know, I'm calling it the casting deck because that's typically what people are calling it. I'm not using it for that yet, uh, but it uh, it turned out well. We've got some serious wire management here that we did. <laughs> I call it serious. But now we've got all the cables zip tied and up off the floor of the boat. The bottom of the, the floor of the boat is clean. No extra anything laying around. We got ourselves a collapsible paddle. We've got we've got life jackets on here. We've got an anchor on here, a throwable device. Uh, what else did I stick in there? A couple of bumper buoys to hang off the side of the boat. All that's in the boat now. But look how clean and neat everything looks. So what I did here, folks, as you can see here, I've got a little strap I sewed on, or not sewed on here, stapled on here. We've got everything in the hull up or in the, up in the bow storage, and I still got space for more stuff. So what we did, uh, I didn't go into a great amount of detail as we did this, and I apologize for that. But it's a lot of those things. A lot of times, somebody just needs the idea, and they can run with it. We're, run with just a little bit of an idea of how I approach something. I mentioned something about having the blacksmith near me. Go ahead and bend me up some aluminum. He had some old leftover diamond plate that he had uh, had from a toolbox that was the softer aluminum that you could bend without cracking, especially when you have to go past 90 degrees like I did here. These, these actually fit just like this. I've got one here. I had to put one, I put one past the seat. The seat sit is uh, right in this area. I put one right here past the seat and I've got a couple up here near the bow here and here to support this front. And what I did is I took some big pop rivets. So as you can see here, I've got some of these big head rivets. They're aluminum. And I use those to pop rivet down to the angle pieces. On the outside of the boat here, as you can see, I've got these, yeah, still got my black marker line here. I've got these pop riveted in right there. And all this is above the water line, but it should seal off either, even if it wasn't. But uh, that's what we did. We just got that all pot riveted down. So you saw in there, I actually did the uh, poly resin, the underside. It didn't show you that. Put it on here, poly resin the top side.
to seal up the wood. Then I put some white, I just had a little bit of white gel coat left over. So I, might, I went ahead and painted this thing with white gel coat. Let that dry. Then I used the Super 77 uh, multi-purpose adhesive made by 3M. I really like this stuff. It goes down nice. It adheres really well. And what I did, I cheated here because I didn't want to cut this opening uh, so that I could wrap the carpet all the way around it. I've got it all sealed and protected anyway with the uh, poly resin. I got poly resin on the underside plus I've got the gel coat in here as well. But it worked out pretty well. I even got the hinges buried underneath here and so they're pretty much hidden and when i what i did is i glued the carpet down i already have this in place glued the carpet down then i took my exacto knife or uh, my utility knife and i cut the opening but i never cut back here on the back side so on the hinge side it's still uncut didn't need to cut that the carpet will help it act like a hinge work like a hinge so it turned out really well i'm, I'm really thrilled to thrilled with this thing and the other thing I, I showed you that I was going to do is I overhung the uh, the front seat, overhung it, and this is why. I wanted to put my battery box up front here. I needed some ballast up in the front of the boat, so if I'm by myself, the boat will actually sit uh, not so nose high up in the air. So we've got that uh, battery box tucked right underneath there, and we've got the wiring. Let me get you show you a shot of the wiring. You can see I've got the wiring running through a little hole that was there and the seat brace and I got it all the extra wire underneath in the storage area I got it coming back through for the uh, battery so I've got the fish finder wiring running through there as you can see this little pigtail sticking out right here that's uh that's why you hook the battery charger up without move, removing the cover or doing anything funky like that but uh did a little wire management back here on the fish finder because in the wind, when you're trailing this thing, these things will just bounce out of place. So I zip tied those so they're secure. And uh, the old fish finder wiring can stay hooked in place. But man, I am just stoked about this. We're going to take it out in the water today. We're going to see how well it works. My son's always going with me out here and he's taking, he's running the drone and taking some, uh, some all this great aerial footage for you guys. And he gets to sit up on a nice little comfortable carpeted area now instead of just a plain aluminum seat. Plus he's got some room to, to work there. And uh, without a lot of clutter. The only other thing I've got out of the boat right now, or not out of the boat, but external to the storage area, is I've got this little bow rope here. And uh, that's what I always use when I launch it, so i got something to hold on to. And so the boat don't get away from me. But yeah, this, uh, we got my... <laughs> Got my tripod mount here. Here's where I get the videos for the for the back of the boat. Or, you know, from me looking ahead to the back of the boat. And I can I'm gonna get some forward facing stuff too today is my plan. But uh got that strapped in there. Might come up with a little fancier uh camera mount there eventually, but I haven't done that yet. The other thing we did, you guys saw the, the tail light casualty they had, so now we've got wired in some brand new LED lights. So I'm hoping that'll uh, should be a little brighter and these are submersible so they should be able to handle the going into the water but uh, yeah the old boats coming along we've been doing a little bit of fixing up here and there the other thing that uh, this is a this is what I call a weekend project doing something like this this only cost me about well the marine grade plywood half inch plywood from my local Menards it's a lumber yard here in Iowa uh, was $58 a sheet so and then I used just over half the sheet on this part of the project and then the carpet is actually left over from the other project I had uh, if you guys have been following me you know I'm working on the banana boat all I've got left to do on that's wiring and registration you guys will see that on the water I know some people have been asking for it are asking to see the final video and I'm like I'm waiting for the DNR to get my uh, registrations put through so I can get that thing out of the water but uh, yeah, I had leftover carpeting there. I rip cut some two by fours. You see, I still got some left over here. I overbought there big time. I, uh, it was gonna be, I thought I was gonna need more boxing and bracing than I did, but it was, actually kept it pretty simple. Uh, you can, I can walk on this deck lid. I can actually stand right on this door. All my weight, I actually tested it yesterday, put all my weight, 270 pounds on there, and I kind of bounced up and down and, 
it's rock solid because I use that as you can see here whoops as you can see here I over lapped I uh, brought the lip here with the two by it's actually an inch and a half by inch and a half I brought that inside so this lid could rest against it plus this is part of the original seat here or oh, this is the original seat that I let overlap that way so it's really it's really stout this thing is sturdy you can stand on it anywhere anywhere uh, it's also gonna make it nice for stepping in and out of the boat a uh, bigger platform than just trying to stand on these seats here but what I did here is I've got this I wrapped this ep lip around I didn't want to come down too far I had to I wanted to come down just far enough that the battery box could clear I can get this battery box in and out but it does just by just by wrapping it like that it just makes a neat clean looking uh, finish on that bad boy but yeah we're talking if you were to buy all the materials that I bought here I paid I paid the blacksmith I've got I still got more of these because I've got some seats back here that I need to on these uh, angles that are on the side back here similar situation where the uh, the aluminum starting to crack and give a little bit but we'll make that another project another day but yeah it was twenty three dollars for the for these angles to get bent up and I've got probably another well six seven of them left so I can use them for anything in the future as well uh, after I decide to mount some other stuff on this boat I can use use it for that but you know less than a hundred bucks uh yeah it was less than 100 bucks altogether i believe maybe 125 by the time you buy pot rivets and but anyway let's call it 125 but i got a sweet looking deck on the front of this thing now and it should last me for many 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 years because you guys have heard me say it before i don't store my boats outside and if they are outside they got a dog cover over it could you store this thing outside for an entire summer let it rain on it and get dirt and everything else on it it's going to look like it's 10 years old after one year uh because i keep covers on stuff this thing will look the same as it does now you know 10 years from now is the plan uh if i don't sell the boat between now and then well i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope all you folks did i had a fun time doing this it's it you know i get a lot of pleasure out of doing some of these projects like this uh where you're making something better getting creative uh improving something that wasn't uh quite where it needed to be before i know when these old john boats and, and v bottom boats were made many years ago it was just a just to get your butt so you can sit out on the middle of the water anywhere and throw a fishing pole in the water and that's cool uh a lot of these things aren't modified but it is fun to take an old boat like this like this is a 1969 and make it look like it has some modern flair to it and i, I really enjoy that we're gonna we're gonna keep doing a few more things here and there, and I keep telling myself this is just my test boat. This is just the boat I bought, only to throw these outboards on these short shaft outboards on, so I can run them down the lake and see how they do, and, and see how they perform out. And that way, when I do sell a motor off that I work on, that I I got great confidence that this thing should perform for somebody. Uh, I tell you what, when I go out in the water, and after I've run my motors in the test tank for uh, several hours minimum uh, after i've done working on them i'm not going to throw it back in the test tank and and run it for several more hours that's not necessary but when i do a carb rebuild and i do set the points and ignition and you know any kind of major major work and i want to make sure i want to do a little bit of durability test uh if i if my motor comes out on me in the in the middle of the lake or anywhere on the lake it's going to be a surprise to me. I'm going to be going, what the heck went wrong? Because I felt like I did everything right. But things can happen. Spark plugs can still foul. Fuel lines can still fail. There's, there's still a few things that can go wrong and keep you from having a lot of fun. But that's why I have that trolling motor on the back of this boat. Uh, this trolling motor isn't to go trolling. This trolling motor is so I don't have to paddle this thing back to shore anytime anywhere i keep the battery charged up it's plugged in I, like this morning i just unplugged it and the, the charge light was green so it should be enough to take me i should test it and see how many miles it will take me but all my other trailer motors and stuff i've seen them you know easily go you can go 12 13 miles on a charge without any problem at wide open uh this is just a 40 pound thrust on this one but it uh it should go away uh I don't know what else to say. I've been I'd like you folks get out there and do something fun. Enjoy life. Pick up a project. Take it to the end. 
Uh, I think this thing here, this whole sea nymph has been, I did it segments, you know, I did enough to get it on the water. I've done enough, I'm doing a little more to improve it. I'm not sure what I'll do next. I think the only thing I really want to do next is just what this camera is sitting on right now is uh, maybe come up with a better camera mount that's a little more uh, robust and a little more versatile, easy to take on and off. You know, all those, all those kind of fun words, all those, all those $20 words that people like to use. That's all I got, folks. I hope you guys had a good time. I had a great time. Uh, see you on the next video. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. If you like the content of the videos, I know the videos, I've got several hundred videos out there now, and I know my early videos aren't as great, I shouldn't say as great. Um, I look at them, I look back on them, and I go, ah, these aren't as good as they could have been. But when you get into doing YouTube videos, it's not about, uh, uh, you try to do some good stuff, but then you learn as you edit and put it out there and get feedback. And I do appreciate you folks giving me feedback, uh, both positive and negative. Uh, because I learned from it. I learned from every one of your comments and I do appreciate your comments. So hit that thumbs up. Uh, that thumbs up really helps the channel out a lot. Uh, gets more recognition, gets more views for me as a result and uh, keeps the content going so I can afford to keep doing stuff like this. Uh, this is a hobby that just barely pays for itself. Let's just call it that. Uh, this is not a get rich quick thing. I'll tell you that right now, folks. But I am enjoying the living crap out of doing this stuff for you guys. Uh, I love doing the videos. I like seeing the comments. I like seeing the views. Uh, it's just, it's fun. It's fun for me. And I, I learn something every time I do something out here. I learn how to work on motors. Uh, every time I mess with them, I'm learning something a little new. Uh, maybe right now that I've done a water pump for the... 15th time it's not that big a deal but you do see some little nuances that you didn't see before here and there on these different horsepower range motors and different makes and models this is michael folks and i'm out mm -hmm.